Hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of The Ghost Files. Uh, it is Friday, July 8th. Uh, this week, I'm coming at you from Westport, Massachusetts, where I've been staying this summer with my family, uh, getting ready for the Never Hike Alone 2 production and a bunch of other things. And of course, uh, earlier this week, if you've been paying attention to the one Hello. I think I'm going here one second. I'm going to fix my mic. I heard it go out halfway through. Wow, isn't that fun? Um, isn't that something? So let me switch over to here real quick. Sorry, buddy. Um, can everybody hear me? Can I get a, can someone uh, type in the uh, chat that they can actually hear me? Sorry, this is really embarrassing right now. That's too bad. Um, anyway, hopefully you can, Okay, great. You can you can hear. So anyway, you can hear me, uh, which is good. Uh, so earlier this week, if you were paying attention to the Womp Stomp Films um, uh, social media pages and the Indiegogo page, we announced that we are going to make an animated short called Ghosts in the Fog, a Never Hike Alone uh, animated fan film for Friday the 13th. And it's something we've been really excited about. It's something we've been working on behind the scenes, and we kind of teased fans when we uh, talked about it. Um, during our announcement of the Never Hike Alone 2 delays that we had sort of worked out our delays and we knew when we were gonna go into production, but we were also working on something behind the scenes uh, with a couple of friends of ours that we were gonna announce and we announced it this week. And speaking of that, my guest this week is Juan Rivera from Mako Animation, who is uh, Mako Animation Studio, who is uh, helping us out with the project with him and his team. And I'm gonna welcome him to the show right now. Everybody say hello to Juan. I do want. Hi, 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 Ben. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Juan Rivera from Mac Animation Studio here in Mexico. Thank you for the invitation, Ben. Very of glad course. To, meet, to meet you here. Yeah, and so uh, Juan, thank you for coming on the show. Obviously, we've been talking for quite a while now. Yeah. Um, you know, I think fans are probably pretty uh, surprised to hear that we had been working on an animated thing, but I think it's pretty funny how we met because we actually met through Never Hike Alone, correct? Yeah, correct. It was a very interesting way of meeting. It was uh, via Twitter, if I if I can remember, because I back up the I, I get some of the perks for Never Hike Alone, mm -hmm. uh, Never Hike Alone in the Snow, right here. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. there it is. Yeah, there it is, and I got uh, some pins also. Uh, let me show you, right here. Nice. Yeah, and, and, oh, the cool. Blu and the Blu-ray also, and but I didn't receive any of the perks in some of the time, and I saw that uh, people were tweeting you like, "Hey, I got my my perks already. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, want some films, uh, beans? This is so cool." And I tweet you uh, uh, something like, "Oh, I wish I had my perks already." Uh, with me. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, and, and a sad you guilted uh, me. <laughs> yeah, it, and I and I put a sad uh, gift, uh, a SpongeBob that was like this on with his coffee, and you tweeted me. You know what? Uh, you you will get them eventually, but when you get them, please send me one happy gift and show me your 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 perks. And then you you tweeted me a direct message uh, saying, "Hey." So you, do you have a, an animated uh, studio, an animation studio? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I work on, on an, animated an animation studio here in Mexico. I am the CEO. And you were like, OK, let's, let's talk, because I have some projects that I want to, to give life on animation. One of them is uh, Ghost Chicken. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about that. So yeah, we'll definitely jump into Ghost yeah. Chicken in a little bit, and I, I, I guess I'll jump in here. Is that yeah, it was sort of, sort of funny. We met because um, while I was while I was uh, putting your perk through and I was getting your your contents together, you were part of the international backers, which we were doing after the fact, and we were really close. And I believe you were one of a handful of of backers from Mexico. So I was like, perfect. This is actually a great time and a great excuse to jump in and. Uh, get all of Mexico done, but also for somebody who was like, hey, I'm looking for my stuff. I always sort of like go like, okay, if this person's really wanting it, then I'm going to send it now. But when I was looking at it, I saw in your email that you had an animation studio and I had spent many years in animation. That's how I got my start. And so I was just kind of curious because I had been working on the ghost chicken short and I knew that I wanted to animate it and I was looking for an animation studio. I think at that time we had already 
done the storyboard and we were cutting together the animatic and I think we was able to send you the animatic right away because yeah. I wanted to see what we could do. So that's a project we had been talking about going behind the scenes. And then through the process of sort of working on ghost chicken and getting things done for that, um, you and everyone at Mako uh, was working on a on on something. But before we get to that, why don't we talk a little bit about Mako and and where you got your start and, and what you do in uh, with your studio? Well, we 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 uh, sorry for the for the screaming. Uh, we started uh, back in 2015 with the animation studio. Uh, Prior to that, we, we were an advertising uh, agency. We opened it up on 2006. But in 2015, my, my brother and I were talking about making uh, stuff in animation. And we decided to write down uh, an animated series called John Dead that right now is on YouTube. Uh, you can watch the three seasons there uh, for free. And that series was about um, Dead, the Grim Reaper, trying to be uh, a normal person in the, among the living, uh, live a life among the living, but he cannot uh, get his natural being of being the, the dead. So in every chapter that he is doing stuff that we do every day, he kills uh, someone by accident or, or stuff. And, and the animated series is based on the on the work of Chuck Jones, Tex Avery kind of comedy, uh, mixed up with. Uh, the way Chaplin made his his comedy very physical comedy, so that's what how uh, uh, Mac Animation started uh, to make animation here. And the funny thing is that that was our first um, series, uh, home series, home IP, and we get attention from Cartoon Network to to get the IP. So we pitched the the idea to Cartoon Network, uh, among other uh, fifty guys who who pitched the, their series mm -hmm. and we get chosen. We, we were one of the chosen between three animated series to be on Cartoon Network. So we were very happy. First attempt and first success. Cool. I mean, yeah. that's great. I mean, I've, I've seen the work. It's really great. It's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to work with you guys. You guys are obviously big fans of animation, but you're also a big fan of Friday the 13th. So you grew up with, yeah. as a big Friday the 13th fan, right? And so tell, yeah. tell me a little bit about hey. like you becoming a Friday the 13th fan and, and sort of when did you discover Never Hike Alone and, and sort of go through that story for me? Well, uh, my my first attempt to watch Friday the 13th was when I was uh, seven, eight years old. On um, Here on, on Mexico, is, uh, there is a channel called Canal Cinco, uh, Channel 5. And you get these like marathons going on on Saturdays or Sundays. So on um, one Saturday, it was like a horror marathon. Friday the 13th, part two, three, and four, or three, four, and five. So I get mesmerized, not, not about the story, because I didn't quite get the story of Friday the 13th, but <laughs> yeah, but I get mesmerized from, from the work of Tom Sabini uh, uh, or the, the people who made that kind of very gore deaths, make, making. Uh, very unique and very creative kind of, of way. Well, I was a, a very small child, but I, I, I get like, oh God, that was the, the, the time I also watched uh, Jaws and Jaws is my favorite movie of all time. So it was the same thing, uh, seeing a big a big uh, shark coming out of, of, the, of the sea and trying to uh, take these three guys on a boat. It was like, oh, wow. So for Friday the 13th, I, will, I always uh, cheer it for Jason, I was always like, yeah, get them, Jason, yeah. So I grew up with, with all the movies uh, seen over and over and over again. I watch uh, one or two movies per year for like uh, a, re a religion case mm -hmm. of, of getting them all seen uh, between years. But I, at some point, I was like, okay, we need uh, more content uh, of Friday the 13th content, but you get you get the lawsuit between Cunningham and, and mm -hmm. Miller this uh, these prior years. So I was very frustrated, and I watch uh, all the Friday the 13th uh, content. I watch the Crystal Lake uh, memories, and in some point, I get an announcement of the Never Hike Alone uh, fan film 
on 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 my Facebook uh, like uh, story. Well, mm -hmm. you know that you're you're searching for for some kind of 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 theme, and you get that that uh, content. So I watch the uh, an announcement of of Never Hike Alone, and I was like, okay, a fan film. Let's let's see how it goes. And I was very very impacted or, or or amazed of the quality of of your fan film. It was like, well, this guy knows how to do a a, a film. This this uh, fan film is very high quality. It's it's higher than some of the of the actual movies of of Paramount movies or New Line Cinema movies. Uh, uh, Jason goes to hell. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I cannot stand that movie. But I know. Well, it was one of the ones that sort of sent me on to like. I I think like for me, Jason goes to hell was a real kind of turning point for me as a fan because it started to like. Friday the 13th really started to depart. Not that part seven and part eight didn't depart, but like it felt like a complete, like we left Friday the 13th and, and we've never been back since. It's, it's what really inspired yeah. me to make Never Hike Alone was sort of like, I want this tone without saying one thing or the other to feel like this is an extension of the Paramount uh, yeah, Paramount world. And uh, hey, uh, King Chuck with a $5 super chat. Thank you for that. Uh, and he has... Super excited for Ghost in the Fog and Never Hike Alone too, which will be really yes. cool. We're gonna get to we'll get to some of the details about that. Um, so yeah, I mean it's good. I, you know, it was, so what was nice was that when we met and talked, it, we had this mutual kind of love for Friday the Thirteenth, a mutual love for bringing horror into animation. The, you know, you obviously brought like that touch of it with John Dead, and then we're doing it with, you know, we were doing it with Ghost Chicken, and then all of a sudden it sort of came up that it, like I had always wanted to do Friday the Thirteenth in animation and at one point i won't say too much i don't know how much my ndas will go but like i was pitching a, an animated friday the 13th concept to studios at one point um which was going very well and then the second round of the lawsuit killed those pitches and so you know we were talking and then um you know Juan, i remember you guys were saying that you guys were going to start delving into it, and that's sort of when we started talking about ghosts in the fog yeah um and i'm just going to pitch to the to everybody what it sort of is was we were talking and the idea was let's come up with something that's in the realm of the opening of Never Hike in the Snow, something short, something that we could raise some money for quickly and make in a, in a good amount of time. Because uh, animation is a long process. Um, you know, even though we're looking for like five to seven minutes, it's probably going to take five to seven months to make. Um, and we're pretty far through the process already. We we're, we're storyboarded it. Um, we're cleaning up those boards now. We're in pre-production pre for the designs and the look of the film and all that stuff, which we'll get into. And, and Juan will talk about that in a minute, too. But basically, for anyone who doesn't know, the concept of uh, Ghost in the Fog is three hikers are out in the forest around Camp Crystal Lake or out in Crystal Lake. They get lost in a fog and wander into Camp Crystal Lake and then run into Jason Voorhees and mayhem ensues. And so for us, our goal in this film was that we wanted to show fans what you can do with Jason Voorhees that you can't do in live action. So these are kills and we've come up with kills and sequences and color schemes and things that bring Friday the 13th to a new level. And it's going to make it really, really cool. Um, that's what we're running right now in the Indiegogo for Never Hike Alone 2. So we see that we have this hundred grand to go to get to our stretch goals for Never Hike Alone 2. And with, you know, crowdfunding kind of slowing down because the, the, the original campaign is over and, you know, we're not shooting till next year. We wanted to keep things lively. Juan and I had talked um, and we started coming together for this project. Um, what's your fundraising now? What that helps us with is getting this part of the production done. But we also want to use this as a catapult to get to uh, $250,000 and $300,000, which will add more kills to the film. And this is the proof of concept for if we raise that $300,000, the surprise is, is that the ghost of Crystal Lake is going to be animated in a very similar way. So we're going to take these prequels um, to Never Hike Alone. These are films that exist before the world of Never Hike in the Snow, before um, Never Hike Alone. Think about like Disappear. Disappear takes place in 2004. These films take place between 2004 and 2016. So they can fall anywhere on the map and we'll find places for them to go. But that's where this kind of happens. And it's all about sort of the original concept of Never Hike Alone, which is people go into the forest and they don't come out. And so these are the missing persons posters and things like that that are sort of going to pop up in Never Hike Alone 2. So that's how it sort of plays into the whole theme. And the more we raise, 
the more we can add to these films, we can bring in voice voice cameos. Um, we, you know, Tom Matthews is going to be a part of this as, as a voice cameo. I don't want to spoil too many things. Um, I'm going to be doing a voice. Uh, Diego Valenzuela, who is one of the producers and co-writers with me on the project, is going to be doing a voice. Juan was a co-writer on the project and, and helped come up with the idea. Him and, and Diego wrote the original script um, and asked me to join and, and sort of our kind of came together and we got really excited about doing this. I know this is something that I'm super excited about because I've been pitching this for a long time. And I think that this is just not only a great opportunity for fans to get this short, the short will be put on the Never Hike Alone 2 Blu-ray. So if you're getting the Never Hike Alone 2 Blu-ray, this will be a bonus. So think about your like upgrading the bonus contents of the Blu-ray. If you want more, that's how you do it. Um, one other thing I want to explain about the Indiegogo is that there's all obviously all the tiers. We have new pins. Uh, we have new shirts. Um, we have the poster for Ghost in the Fog. We have the VIP section. Uh, but obviously, what's really cool is that we have, uh, and I, I'm going to have to go get it in a little bit, but we have the Ghost Jason doll. Uh, we have the Missing Persons posters, which you'll be anim your face will be animated into the film, into one of those posters. So we'll have to do that. But the coolest thing is that anyone who's willing to get the EP credit, which I believe is $3,500, you will be in the film. We will take one of the characters. We will take a photo of you from when you're in your early 20s or if you're in your early 20s now, and we will make the character look like you. Um, we won't voice the character, but we'll give them your name and your likeness, and you will be the character in the film along with being an EP in the film, which I think is pretty cool. There are two male characters and one female character. Uh, we cannot change the sex of characters uh, for that, so we ask if you're the third person and you're not a female, that you find a female in your life that you love and you want to dedicate it to, and we will make them. So it's, it's a great gift. I mean, guys, if you want to get something for your girlfriend or your wife, get her into a horror movie. And let me tell you, you want <laughs> the female character is the best one, in my opinion, for this yeah. movie. The other two are, are great. Um, but uh, you want to be the female. I'm telling you, you want to get this for your girlfriend. I'm, I'm, <laughs> she will love you forever. I swear to God, if you get her this role, it's a great role. Um, it's it's actually that role is going to be played by Luciana Failhaber, Fallhaber, who was in uh, Pathosis. She's our lead actress. She's Brazilian. She's awesome. I love uh, Luciana. She's she's one of my favorite actresses to work with. So it's going to be great to bring her in for the voice. We have, you know, and then obviously we're going to have Ghost Jason stomping around, which I guess I'll have to do the breathing for the ADR. But I don't know if uh, we're really going to have too many breaths coming out of Jason. So that's sort of like the rigmarole of what we're trying to do. We hope we can raise more money for this to, to, to do more things. And obviously, if this does really well and you're digging what we're doing with this animation, we will launch the Ghost Chicken Project, which we'll talk a little bit more about the end of the episode. But um, since I've said my end of it, Juan, why don't you take us through how the conversations at Mako started to say that, like, you know what? I think it's time for us to, to step into the Friday the 13th game and what, you know, and then how our kind of collaboration came together. Well, uh, at one point when we were talking about Gold Chicken, uh, seeing all the, all the animatic that you made for 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 that project and stuff, I was uh, with the itch of telling you, you know what, we should make something for the Friday the 13th. You're already there. We, we can make uh, like an animated test for for your film or an in, uh, uh, a very short animated intro or something. So I was uh, at one point talking to Diego Valenzuela, who is the, the co who is the writer of of, uh, of this uh, this project, and is a co story uh, creator. I was talking to him, and I was like, you know what, we should uh, write something down to to give it to 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 Beans. And he was like, oh God, I, I'm huge fan of of his movies. I'm a huge fan of of what he's working on. That would be so cool. Let's do it. So at one point, I was talking to my team about uh, making that uh, an animation test for, uh, for you as a gift. Uh, so I sit down with uh, with right. other guy that is uh, working with us, uh, Bernabe, and I told him, you know what, we should uh, make this little like uh, animatic, like a little storyboard based on the on the work of Never Hike Alone, and mm -hmm. let's animate that. So he started to work on 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 on, on the storyboard for that. Uh, we started to to think about that ten seconds uh, uh, test, twenty second test, thirty second test, and it uh, and it began to to escalate <laughs> very quickly. Uh, and then when I presented the idea uh, to you, 
you were like, uh, you know what, man, uh, we can, if we are going to do this, uh, we have to do it uh, well and make an original story for, for an animated uh, project. So that's mm. how, how it began. So right now, uh, yeah. well, back then we, we sit down with Diego and start to think in a, on, on a story. You put like the, 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 the basic uh, stuff, the basis of, of, of the story, you know, on where uh, can be made, uh, what years, with how much uh, characters, on what part, mm -hmm. part of Crystal Lake. That's, that's one of the, of the main things about this story. And it's a, a surprise for everyone. But it's, uh, well, everyone who's a fan of, of, of Friday the 13th, you know that it's Pinehurst, that you have the, the Jarvis house, you have the first uh, Friday the 13th Camp Crystal Lake uh, uh, mm -hmm. ground. And it's a, a, lot of, a lot of places on the, on the Friday the 13th uh, universe. So we decided on which one is going to be made. Uh, and it's, it's a very cool process. Uh, right now, we have the script done and we're working on some animation tests we have uh a very cool very 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 cool uh aspect of a lookalike of of jason mm -hmm. so it's going to be it's yeah. i mean it's really wild i wish i tonight um we're mostly going to talk about it i think over the coming weeks we'll do reveals of character designs especially if you know someone becomes an executive producer we're obviously going to put that all over the place once we have their final character design. We'll pull them into the discussion to say, like, "Hey, this is going to be you. What do you think? You know, of this? Is there anything that offends you about this? Yeah. About this look? Um, you know, we'll let you see sort of where the character is at right now and how we're going to adjust it to them. We don't want to. You know, we're obviously going to work within certain character shapes and things like that. So there are things we're going to do with that, but. Um, but it's going to be a really cool process. And, you know, I, I love the animation process. I love, I love the building of it. You know, when we first started and you guys showed me the script, it was a great idea. It was nice and contained. And I think that that's what I think people should really be, you know, aware of is that this is a contained short. This isn't anything super long. This is more of something that's like a show piece. This is showing fans what we can do for, you know, if we raise to that next stretch goal, we get to $250,000, you're going to get, a kill montage how to never hike alone and you're going to get an animated short that's going to be five to seven minutes long that shows off what our potential is for that with what goes on from there is on what, what i sort of talked to juan about when we um we were getting started was like i want to build a world between 2004 and 2016. i want to sort of be very stickler about the continuity and about the things that can happen and the things that can't happen and sort of adding to the mystery and the mystique of the whole world and so Ghost in the Fog is also something that's really cool because it's something that's an actual real danger. You know, if you're out in the forest, if you ever got hit with a mist and you haven't been able to see the trees like two feet in front of your face, it's a pretty scary thing. You can take a wrong turn and you can end up in the wrong place. You could fall off a cliff. You could, there's lots of things that could happen. So it's something that I, I think that sort of works into what Never Hike Alone is, is that Never Hike Alone is really grounded in reality in some ways. It plays into something that is already scary and then heightens it with the additional inclusion of Jason Voorhees. Um, seeing Jason animated is gonna be a great opportunity for us and for fans. Um, we designed some really cool kills um, and, oh, yeah. it was a, and it was a great team effort. Like we all pitched and sort of stuck to our guns on things. We we're like, no, we, like just for this moment, it's gotta be this. And you know, Juan came up with a really great idea for the end. Um, you know, we, we got some, we're really excited about it. We had a, a storyboard artist by the name of John David Leslie, he did all the storyboards. Um, those have been approved, we're in the cleanup phase right now. I'll be editing uh, the short film um, here uh, at my home computer, and then we'll be passing everything off for animation and doing records from all over the place and things like that. But what we're mostly looking to do is raise as much as we can to get production started by July 15th. That's our next payout date for uh, Indiegogo. Um, we received money like three or four days later or something like that. And then we'll be able to sort of get into the next phase of production, uh, which is going to be the animation and getting the film actually made. Right now, um, we're trying to get the pre-production funded, which it looks like we're pretty close already, if not already there, which I believe was like $500, I mean $5,000 to get it going. Um, but the next stage is going to be about twenty-five dollars to $30,000 that we're going to have to raise. And then the extra $20,000 is going to go directly into Never Hike Alone 2 and anything else that we make for that. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be great. Oh, we got another. Uh, I can't remember the name of these because I, I've been doing this for only so long. 
Um, thank you, Seed of Memory. Remember, if you're going to make donations, try to do it to the actual uh, link that is in this uh, th um, in the description of this video. Uh, do it on the Indiegogo. YouTube takes a huge chunk out of the money that you guys donate here. Although I do appreciate it. It looks really good on our insights for YouTube. It helps us get more traction. So we, I do appreciate Super Chats and Nate being able to get your uh, questions right up to the top. But uh, Seed of Memory, thank you very much. Um, Yes, hopefully we can get this going and Juan and I can get working on many, many projects. Um, I'm going to start jumping into some questions, Juan, just to get them going. Yeah, sure. Um, which I'm going to start off with my good, <coughs> with this one. This is the best one, I think. We want ghost chicken. <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to ghost chicken in a sec, Sophie. But um, yeah. and I'll actually say, uh, I'll actually keep this one starred because there's a story with Sophie about this as well. Um, John Zuzulu, who is, uh, I believe you're, you're, producer by now with all the stuff that you've backed so it's good to see him he's a he's a long time backer and a big time backer for never hike alone too and i believe he's already backed never hike in the fog so i mean ghost in the fog so thank you very much um let's see so doomsday crypt the animated prequel seems like a great idea to really go full throttle on kills and creativity yes yes it is yeah, yeah it um is. it's really the focus i mean the focus of this is to show fans what gore can look like in um in an animated world. So why, why don't we talk about the look of the film? What what, is, what have we been talking about as far as like what we're going to bring to the stylized? Because I think you do a great job of explaining what our um, what our look is. Yeah, well, at, at first uh, we were taking, uh, thinking about doing something on the level of Castlevania, that the series for Netflix, but it was a very complicated uh, process to get there. So when I was talking to, to Max, uh, our producer, and Moy, our main producer for, for, the, for, for the series and, and uh, the animated uh, director for, for this project, uh, we were thinking about how the, the, the look of, of, of the Ghost in the Fog pro uh, project could be. And we take uh, Bruce Team from Batman, the animated series. Uh, we think uh, Underworld. Uh, some of the work of, of Henry Tartakovsky, and we mix it all, uh, all over uh, in one big uh, soup for, for saying something. And we began to, to make some of, of uh, experimentation on, on the look like for Ghost in the Fog. But, oh, here. Uh, the kids running around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, what was I think, talking about? Uh, we were oh, talking well, about it was Bruce Tim and and uh, Underworld. Yeah, it's 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 a, a very uh, unique uh, look for for uh, horror uh, animated episode for for saying something. But one of the things that we like is that it's going to be on black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, for for this uh, first episode, it's going to be on black and white, and we're going to have some of the of the things uh, getting color like reds. Or or yellows to like to, to get this this feeling of horror uh, mm -hmm. on, on an escalated uh, thing. So if you have, uh, for example, oh let me get where is he? Where is he? Oh here. <laughs> if you get uh, Jason, he's going to appear on black and white, but you can have like the holding axe on on yellow. That is a, a very char characteristic uh, thing on Never Hike Alone that you have. Your yellow. Yeah, hats. so we're we're working in that realm of sort of like a Sin City stylized yeah. comic book look. It's got, you know, when we talked about it, I was really going for, um, you know, some sort of like Jason and the Batman animated series, but with a little bit more of an edge, which I think the two tone really helps out. We talked about Mask of the Phantasm. I've been referencing the Long Halloween. Now, I keep in mind, like we're doing this on a budget, so we don't have like millions of bucks to go out and do like huge things but we're using those as our guidelines and because this is short we're a lot we can actually hit those those stylized things so that's what we're really going for is like clean lines um really you know just really solid uh you know i've been talking about like strong shapes bold bold lines um but then scary 
So a lot of the, you know, well, we wanted to leave room for the guts and the gore, which are going to be a yeah. lot of fun. And I, uh, I think that that's going to be really, really cool. Uh, we have also uh, Jason Lips for for an inspiration for, for mm -hmm. the background, very gothic uh, background, you know. Yeah, and there's a lot of fog in that film too. Uh, part seven, well, uses fog really, yeah. really well. They use a lot of atmosphere. And so that's going to be one of the cool things about the films. We're going to use the atmosphere as going to be a character. Um, it's going to get the characters in trouble, obviously. And, um, you know, the set design is actually a lot of the set design is actually going to be based on Never Hike Alone. Yeah. Um, Never Hike in the Snow, to be particular, the scene where um, where Mark goes up to the cabins and things like that, uh, we're using a lot of the production design and, and using those things. So fans are recognizing things from our film, but we're also, like Juan said, going to be weaving things in um, as we go to make it feel like we're at that original Friday the 13th camp as well, sort of creating that hybrid. And that's one of the cool things about animation, I think, is that, like, for live action, for us to go and try to tie those two worlds together, it, it's two locations. It's like two different days of shooting. Um, yeah, would, no, here, you know what I mean. Here, you, you you can say, you know what, we need uh, three more three more trees here and up trees that goes down in some way. Okay, let's make it. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's very cool, very cool. Yeah, thing. so and that was one of the things that I'm I'm actually I'm getting uh, I'm making an order right now. We should be here in a second for a. Uh, for a little thing I want to bring on on the show, but um, the yeah, the, the fact that we like we can take this world, and we can build it from the ground up. That was always one thing I loved about animation was that you know in live action you have to go out and kind of search for what you want, and you do have to do a little bit in animation. You have to search and you have to do research on what you want. But at the end of the day, like you're creating it from the ground up, and we can take that inspiration from the things that were already there from Never Hike Alone that we've been developing, and translate them into the animated world, which has really helped us in the production design stage because we haven't had to really start from base level zero. We've just been like, here's some elements to work with. Now let's bring them into the animated world. And I think that that's, that's just what I'm so excited about is the fact that like animation is such a great medium to do things that you just can't do in live action. Um, you can have different things. Oh, here it is. My, my brother's bringing in. Thank you, buddy. Here's that. Uh, button, everybody. Look at this guy. That, that, Look. that one is mine. <laughs> <laughs> the sickle comes <laughs> off and everything. <laughs> So John McNeil and Jordan, uh, Jordan Duffick. Uh, Jordan wow. Duffick did the paint for this. John McNeil did the 3D print and the thing. It's a figure or it's a, I don't know, it's a statuette. What, what is it, guys? Uh, I was getting slack from somebody in, in the live chats about it being not a, it's not a, it's not an action figure, obviously. No, it's, it's like um, a collectible statue of Jason. Honestly, yeah. it's, it's better than a pop. I mean, this this one's eight inches tall. We'll be doing yeah. ones that are five inches tall. So this goes into our EPs and our, and our producers. Um, and then our, our co-producers get the five inch version. We may do a three inch ver fusion, uh, version um, as well. Uh, we'll. We'll maybe release that there. Depending on how sales go, maybe we'll release these to just, hey, maybe you just want one of these. We'll figure out a price to, to do these for and try to raise some money. That might be a way to do it too. You guys let me know. If you guys ever have a suggestion for a crowdfund. I know this one's kind of confusing because you got to go to the Never Hike Alone 2 crowdfund to do that. I just didn't feel like building a whole new campaign. And and I just want everybody's orders in the same place so I can just do it as fast as possible. Let's um, go there. Let me jump back to some of these questions uh, so we can get to there. But that's a great, uh, Tuesday Crypt is a great question. Um, what part of Never Hike Alone universe will Ghost in the Fog live? Uh, like I said, it's going to it's gonna take place between 2004 and 2016. We'll lock in on a date, I think, once we get closer to the execution, like once I get into editorial, that's when I'll figure out. But really, this story could land anywhere. It's just going to be a matter of going like, hmm, where should it fit? Like, is it closer to disappear or is it closer to never hike alone? Is it is it early 2000? Is it like mid 2000s or is it early 20 teens? So we'll figure it out and I'll have to just make sure that I watch. We keep an eye on things for continuity and kind of go from there. Um, and then let me see who else we got. Oh, this was King Chuck doing there. Um, Again, anyone who's interested in the EP credit, this is what Tony was talking about. It's $3,500 to get your face on the character, the name, it will be you. And then you'll either be voiced by me, Diego, or Luciana Fellhaber. Again, great present for a girlfriend, a very great present for a girlfriend or a wife. Um, let's see. There it is. It's not a doll. It's, it's not a doll. It's an action figure. Come on. This isn't an action figure. It doesn't move. <laughs> Well, I guess it's a figure. It's a it's a statuette or whatever. It's a I don't know. Uh, here I'm gonna put him. I, he's not tall enough. 
for that, but we, if I could leave him right there, but he's awesome. Um, again, it will be added to the Never Hike Alone 2 Blu-ray. So you are raising money to help us get a bonus option for the Blu-ray. We can't just produce this out of thin air. That would be kind of too costly to, to that would be unfair to Juan's company and, and the people that need to work on it. Well, we should talk about your team in a little bit. Um, but we've assembled a really great team down there. Now we just have to cover their expenses to actually get the film done. Um, and fans can help that by going to the Never Hike Alone 2 Indiegogo campaign and helping us reach our next stretch goal of $250,000, which will be basically the key for us to, to kind of do this. Um, another good question here. I have a missing person poster in NHA 2. How would this translate to Ghost in the Fog if I purchase the missing poster as well or work with one or three animated characters? So Casey, that would be amazing if you did that. None of the Never Hike Alone 2 perks carry over into Ghosts in the Fog. This is a fresh sort of like starting point for everybody. If you want a special thank you credit in the film, you have to get a new special thank you credit. But that special thank you credit comes with expedited shipping. So if you got a pin, if you got a poster, if you got a Never Hike Alone ghost cut or Never Hike in the Snow Blu-ray, or if you got any other sort of thing that's not Never Hike Alone 2, like the Blu-ray or the VHS, um, Never Hike Alone VHS, we can do. Ghost Cut VHS, we can do. Never Hike in the Snow VHS Cut, we can do. This fall, we will ship your goods, so you don't have to wait another year for the Never Hike Alone 2 Blu-ray to do that. You're just basically playing, paying for shipping twice and then giving us some money to do the film. So it's, it's really going mostly towards the film and then covering your shipping expenses for us to ship things to you twice. So your previous purchase will have covered your shipping for that, just so we're not losing too much money or losing any money for Never Hike Alone 2. Obviously we don't want to lose money to make stuff. Uh, we want to get all the, all the stuff covered and be able to make these films as great as possible. So everything for Never Hike, everything for Ghost in the Fog, it has to be done now. Nothing for Never Hike Alone 2 carries over. Um, one mistake that I did make is if you do get a VIP package or if you get a producer package and you did not previously purchase a Never Hike Alone 2 uh, Blu-ray, you will be getting a Never Hike Alone 2 Blu-ray. And if you're a producer, you're getting everything. That's just basically how it's going to go. It's just going to be like every other producing perk. Like if you go up to that high, you're basically going to get one of everything. Um, I'm going to stuff it in a box. And I'm going to send it to you because you rule for backing us that hard. So definitely keep us in mind, Casey. Hope to see you. Uh, hope to see that purchase um, sometime. Uh, Doomsday's back. Um, you guys seem to go with limited characters in Friday film, which is cool for character building. Is it the suspense of the chase you enjoy writing compared to Total Slaughter? Yeah, I think it's about creating scenes. I, and I also think it's, it's playing to, you know, you want to think about it because the 50, the, the one that we're talking about, which is a bigger film, um, there's more sets. It's a longer story, but it is about one guy for the most part. There are multiple kills in the film. But there's some scenes in there that aren't typical Friday the 13th scenes. I think what I love is taking um, stories and weaving them through the Friday the 13th world versus just coming up with a formulaic thing that we know what's going to happen. When you step into our world, you don't know what's going to happen. I won't say that about Ghost in the Fog because Ghost in the Fog is about as close to a typical Friday the 13th film as it gets. So I think it, I think it definitely... Um, plays into that for this one because it's mostly about the kills even though the characters aren't really doing anything too wrong they're not going out and having sex and doing drugs or anything like that they're just pretty innocent hikers um this one was really about showing off suspense showing the look of picture this is you know it's basically a glorified look development piece which is showing everybody what we can do at our full strength so we can go and do something even bigger and better um just like we did with never hike alone never hike alone oh no No. Okay, oh no! Back. That was close. I'm, I'm alone. Oh, I know. Here we go. Thank I'm in. God. I'm in charge of of oh, ghost fires right now. Out in the country, this is what happens. <laughs> to us. But anyway, um, so long story short, this is going to be a great kind of launching pad for us to do the bigger stories. But our bigger story, Ghost to Crystal Lake, is actually a character piece, and it is the origin of Ghost Jason. So that one is specifically set in 1998-1999 about Ghost Jason's return from. Uh, Manhattan and then finding someone living in his camp and the story is about the person who lives in the camp so it's a pretty it's it's really 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 rad um Elise hello how you doing Elise and Jay uh, it's good good to see you guys um let me see I got let me see if any more questions came in boop 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 
Oh, I'm way behind now. Holy crap. So here we are around my birthday. Um, let's see. Same composer. Yes, we'll be asking. Um, we'll be asking Ryan Perez Dapple to come back. Um, here's a good question. If you're compared to Batman, uh, TA, uh, the animated the series, series, do you plan to paint against the black background as well? Juan? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the same process of, of what Bruce Tim was doing on the animated series, the first uh, season of the animated series. Uh, we are experimenting right now with, with that kind of, of uh, backgrounds and stylish for, for Ghost in the Fox. So, yeah. Great. Cool, cool, cool. Um, here, I'm, I'm flipping through some of this. Their next question, uh, this one's for you, Juan. Uh, this is a good friend of mine, uh, Danae, who's saying hello. Um, hey, mine. finally stopping in, by the way. She loves your Jaws poster. Oh, thank you. It's a puzzle. Yeah, she's a cosplayer who's been on a big Jaws kick. So uh, she's Thank you. The, this, the, well, this one is, is a, it's a puzzle that was a frame. Uh, my family and I, my wife, uh, my little kid and I made this, uh, this puzzle a uh, time ago, and we framed it. Right. And then we got a familiar face saying hello. Max is saying hello. Um, Max, good to see you. Um, yes. Hello, Max. How you doing? Let's see. Uh, let's see. Looking for more. Things. Um, I would love to go to NECA with some stuff. Um, Vincent, would you ever think about going to NECA or have someone make a figure of Goshi? I would love to. I would love to. In fact, we're actually doing a figure that was purchased through the previous Never Hike Alone 2 campaign uh, that's being done, um, which is going to take all year to make. There's a lot of stuff that has to happen, but uh, we are actually working on one that's going to be a fabric version, so that's going to be cool. Uh, uh, wait, um, wait, Vince. Uh, we have to take uh, the idea of getting a NECA from Beta Borges. That image is so cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, Did you see the one that was um, the the Revenant Jason that came out, that, that 3D yeah. rendered one? That is yeah. so, it's very close to Ghost Jason. Yeah. This is actually a really good uh, note right here from uh, from Mitch. Uh, Never Hike in the Fog sounds like Friday the 13th. Wow. By John actually, a lot of inspiration I've actually been using. I don't know if you've seen in my stories, but I've been using a lot of John Carpenter, the Fog soundtrack. It is what I'm going to be using as my temp score. So I'm, I think we're going to be delving into Friday the 13th yeah. needs John Carpenter for this, for a lot of the tone. Um, so I think we're going to get into there. Um, let me see. I got somebody. I got some big uh, things here. Big easy. Looking forward to Ghost Jason in the Fog or Ghost in the Fog. It will make Friday the 13th. It, it will. I think there have been a couple of animated. Ron, have you seen any like fully animated like Friday the 13th things? I know there have been clips with Jason. Like J Jason's been on Family Guy. He's in that anime movie. Yeah, he, he, he had been on, on Raw Chicken and stuff, but no, uh, not a, a full uh, animated chapter for, for an animated series. I, don't, I, I haven't seen one. Yeah, neither. If I. you know, if, uh, if you guys know of so, of something like that, uh, we lost Vin in the mist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sucked me in. Um, oh, this is what I wanted to pop up because this is another great. Re hey, this is this is great. It reminds me of Spawn the animated series. Yes, that's another great one. We should take a look at. We're not going to be as like Spawn really sort of has that I like a rock and roll style to it. As I kind of, it's like very like. There's a lot going on all the time. No, um, no it's, it's very artistic, very out there, which I think is really cool, but it's very contrast. Like everything's very contrast driven with the color schemes and things like that. So I think we'll, in that sense, we will be, um, but we should definitely look at that series for gore references to yeah. see how they animate the gore and things like that. Cause that's one thing we, we have to do that. Uh, Frank wants to know if we have any Easter eggs that we can talk about. Um, we're gonna hide them. Yeah, that that should be that should be like a game. While we're coming up with stuff during during the animation phase, and we're we're approving backgrounds. Maybe it will be we'll challenge our background painters to sort of hide things. Yeah, in the frame. And Definitely going to see. be an Easter egg. Yeah, yeah, there'll be an Easter the, egg or eight. Diego Valenzuela had a very good Easter egg around there, but I don't know if we're going to <laughs> to get it there. No, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, Elise yeah. has a good question. Uh, if you get a really good response to Ghost in the Fog, would you consider doing a longer length animated Never Hike Alone film? You rock, Vin. Thanks, Elise. Yes. Um, that's what I was just talking about with Ghost of Crystal Lake, that if we if this goes well and we raise $300,000 through this campaign, we should have enough to animate the Ghost of Crystal Lake 
animated story, which will be animated, will be the origin of Ghost Jason. It would have to be, it has to be animation because of what I want to do with Jason. He could only be shown in animation. It would be so cool looking. Like I, I can't even, uh, I can't, I can't really spoil it. Um, but that's basically, that's basically what this is hopefully leading towards. This is something we know that we can do. We can get it done for later this year, something to occupy the space for this year. And then next year, obviously our full concentration will be Never Hike Alone 2. And then we, while this is sort of doing its lap around the world, we'd also like to be able to crowdfund and raise money for Ghost Chicken, which we'll get to in a little bit. But Tony Ann has a quick question that he wants to wake. He also did it with a super chat of $20. Thank you, Tony. I want to donate. Vin, you want us to donate via link by the way of perk packages. I don't know what I am getting. I'm sorry. YouTube took a chunk of donation. So I want to get some of that back to your visions. Tony, I, it's okay. It's not your fault. Um, Tony came last week and dropped $500 in this chat. Uh, we ended up getting about like 300 bucks of that after YouTube took some of it. So I'm sorry that that happened. So I would just say, guys, keep your donations here below um, because I, I, maybe YouTube doesn't want me saying that, but I would say go to Indiegogo, because at least most of that goes to us, even though Indiegogo does take 7%. Um, I would say you can do straight donations or you can just, I would say, jump on the Ghost in the Fog page and get some of the Ghost in the Fog perks, because that's a that's a great way to sort of get your name in both films. Um, anyone who donates to Ghost in the Fog is also, if you haven't donated at all yet, you'll get your, your name. It's going to reverse work. It doesn't work the other way, but it works backwards. So if you donate now, it's going into both projects. If you only donated before, you've only donated to Never Hike Alone 2. You have not donated to Ghost in the Fog yet. So you definitely want to jump on that now. But Tony, don't worry about it. You're still getting all the things for VIP perks. If you want to jump in and get anything else, just let me know and we'll build a, a secret perk for you. Um, just, just email me. Uh, let's see. Boop, boop, boop. Um, is it possible we get to see an animated Pamela Voorhees for Ghost in the Fog? I will spoil this now. We don't, no, don't have don't, Pamela. Don't, don't. No, I, I, no, we, no, don't. We, <laughs> no, we have a spoiler. Pamela won't be in this one, but if this is good and you guys like it and you want to do more, I have a full story about Pamela that I want to do and we could animate it. Like it would be, it would be my dream to do it. Also, I will say this, I'm very good friends with James Sweet. I'm very good friends with Tommy McLaughlin. They have a Pamela story that they're working on. Maybe it's something that we can work with them and we can get them partnered with Mako and we can raise some money for them and we can get that animated, which is another potential. So there are definitely potentials for, for Pamela. Pamela will be coming back for Never Hike Alone 2. I can't say that. Um, but for this one, we're really contained to Ghost Jason. It's very much similar into the vein of Disappear and Never Hike in the Snow, where it's it's basically the opening scene. It's, it's a scene about characters doing something, getting chased down by Jason, and then us showing off our, our effects and kill ideas, which I think you're really, really going to like. Um, let's see. What's this one? Uh, Films like this get really good in Studio Green like this or are interested in your film. Would you think about doing a TV series of Ghost in the Fog? Yes. This is actually the ultimate goal. I, you yeah. know, with the with the lawsuit being settled, um, with uh, po potential stuff kind of coming out, this is a series that I would love to bring to animation uh, and streaming. And this is something where we would pitch every year. We'd do six to ten projects of varying length, sort of like a Love Death Robots meets Friday the Thirteenth meets Black Mirror meets all these different things. Anything in the Friday the Thirteenth world goes. If you want to do Jason X Two, if you want to do Jason Takes Manhattan Part Two, if you want to do Never Hike Alone, if you want to do other things that are unrelated, um, it's all on the table, and we can animate them all. And we can also assign different directors. Um, if the work gets too big, we can bring in other studios and work in collaboration and all deliver our episodes for that season and have this really wild season of different films from around the world with different animation styles and different voices. And maybe some of them are subtitled. Maybe some of them take place in different countries or in different planets. So there's a lot of different things that could happen. And we hope that, you know, the studios just sort of see what we're doing. And we're doing this an at cost production, which means we're not making any profit. We're just doing it to pay for the process of making the film and then putting it out in the world for free. That this is something that people will pay for, that they would love to subscribe to. A sh like they would love to get on HBO. They would love to go to a Cartoon Network or an Adult Swim or any one of those companies that streams animation, Netflix or Hulu or Amazon, anything that's within those realms. This is something that if someone was able to obtain the IP for Friday the 13th, that we could 
deliver these shows and say, this is how you take the Never Hike Alone wave that we've built from fan films and turn it into an official project. Uh, we think it's worth going for, um, along with other horror animation, which we're going to get to very, very shortly once I check the last few questions that have come in. Um, thank you, Danae. Uh, we will make those dreams come through. Got it. Tony, don't worry about it. We, we can talk about it later. And... Uh, Vince, if you're able to do the show, would you actually have Friday the 13th show that, then that <laughs> trash eighties Friday show? Yeah, we wouldn't do the, the, the haunted antiques. Um, so yeah, that's basically the spiel for ghosts in the fog is that it's going to be a great five to seven minute, probably six, seven minute on, on the, on the end. Then with all the credits, it will be 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously if we make more, we can always add a little bit more here and there to something. Cause there is some concepts we've talked about, um, about that because but there was something else that we talked about that i kind of i may have been wrong on my cameo i'm just kidding uh no it's <laughs> that it, just basically that you know we're super excited about this obviously but one other project that we're super excited about which i would like to talk now which we can tease for this is we want ghost chicken so one yeah. what you don't know is sophie right here is the first person i ever pitched ghost chicken to Wow. We're at Nightmares Film Festival in uh, Columbus, Ohio in around 2018. Uh, they are for Never Hike Alone. And I was sitting in a vegan restaurant eating a burger saying, this is the best burger I've ever had in my life. And then I came up with an idea. And I pitched the entire idea to, so idea to Sophie uh, right there on the spot. She looked at me like I was nuts. I got on the plane. I wrote the first draft on the way home from that film festival. And I just sat for a while and I, I noodled it and then worked on it again and again and again and again um, and got all of that stuff done. And basically before we had met, I had had a full animatic of Ghost Chicken to the point where I didn't know if I was gonna go animation or live action with it for a while. And then I knew I was gonna go animation with it. Um, and then we bumped into each other and that's sort of how we first got started working. Um, so you've seen Ghost Chicken. Without spoiling anything, what would you say to people who don't know about it yet that they would, how you would just kind of describe it? Well, it's got, it's, how, how, to, how to say it? It's like a big, uh, big nightmare with a, with a, 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 a chasing chick. I don't know how to, how, how to say it, but it's an, an incredible idea. When I first uh, read about what's going on with Ghost Chicken, I was like, this is a very good idea. It, this is a scary idea, but also a fun idea to make. Uh, and it's kind of, of obvious. You, you have these two worlds that collide together on, 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 on a very big uh, comedy horror stuff. It's just incredible. Yeah. And with, with the first ending that you, that you pitched to us, uh, I, I was very happy with that. But when you changed the, 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 the ending, it was even better, even yeah. better. So, I mean, I guess I should have pitched it right away, but Ghost Chicken is a short story about a vegan restaurant haunted by the ghost of a chicken and the one girl who's determined to figure out why. Um, it's it's actually about a 20 minute, I think it's like 20 minute, it's a 20 minute short film. Um, it was a short script that I wrote in 2018 that I started circling around the festival uh, circuit. Uh, it did really, really well, um, won a few awards, placed in a lot of different places, um, was able to sort of get a lot of great notes. And so that's sort of what kind of brought it was as I was animating, or not animating, what I was doing the animatic, I was cutting the animatic for it. I was also submitting it to film festivals in for script things and getting really great notes back, which led me to rewriting the end and sort of weaving a bunch of things together that was sort of always right there. I have to give a lot of credit to the uh, storyboard artist, JD Leslie, who did an amazing job uh, storyboarding that film as well as he's doing on uh, Ghost in the Fog. Um, I also worked with two other uh, uh Monique Arroyo, who I worked with for that, uh, who was a, a storyboard artist. and. Uh, Jay Klaus um, was also a storyboard artist on that. So those three storyboard artists who were actually recommended me by people who I used to work in the film industry with. So uh, big shout out to Josh Zimmon, who helped me bring in some people. Um, another person who I've worked with in the past, Carolyn Gare, was a big influence on that, who's also helping out and being a supervising producer on Ghost in the Fog, who's acting as sort of like my liaison is because I'm really good with a lot of things as far as story and directing animation like i don't have an animation background so sometimes i need carolyn to translate for me to be like there's something i see but what am i seeing she helps me out um so she's been a really good angel on my shoulder for saying like hey 
Carolyn, what's the term for this? Or like, what's this? I want to say this because I want to say it in live action terms, but what's the animation term for it? But I also worked in animation, so I do know how to get to a lot of it there. But she was a character designer, director, all of those things. So she's been super helpful. Um, and so we, my hope for Ghost Chicken is that once we go through the process with um, Ghost in the Fog, that gives us sort of like our starting point to say like, look, we built a pipeline. Building a pipeline in animation is one of the most important, is probably the most important step of the entire thing. Once you have a pipeline, that means that you can run productions through it. It means yeah. you, you repeat the same process every time you go through that. And you're always, you know, and you use projects like we're using with Ghost in the Fog, which is something simple, something straightforward that we can lock down our pipeline on how it's going to work for me to make oh, because obviously I have to cut, I have to send stuff to them. We have to work on those technical things. We have to invent all of these tools in order to make sure that we're working back and forth. We're going to do that during this time so that when we make a bigger project, we've gone through this before and now we feel stable and say, hey, we, we have the ability to take on a bigger project. Yeah. That's what Ghost Chicken is going to be. And I think if I have my druthers, everything goes well in Never Hike Alone 2 in August. We work on this. We get this out through the end of the year. Sometime in the fall, once I get some more um, some more pitch materials ready for, for Ghost Chicken, maybe we get like some some test pieces. We'll probably be launching a, uh, a crowdfunding, if not at the end of this year, at the beginning of next year to help that going. And so while we're doing Never Hike Alone 2, Ghost Chicken will probably be in production somewhere behind that. Um, and I'll probably be working on both of them throughout next summer and stuff like that with one of everything kind of goes out there. And if you guys raise an extra, I guess, $85,000, we could be also expanding the team out even further and working on uh, the ghost of Crystal Lake, which would be a lot of fun. Yeah, or if we get picked up by a studio, we can just make everything. Yeah, we, we, really we can go, go crazy with our, all the ideas. Yeah. yeah. No, this is really good. Let me see. Um, let's see if we've got any other, uh, we get more comments. Well, coming. we can have a cameo of the ghost chicken on, on Crystal Lake. Oh, it should scuttle yes. across the thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's a good... Uh, Moy, who's our production, uh, who's our producer and one of the animators on uh, Ghost, who will, on Ghost Chicken and these things, has a great thing. Is horror film or dark comedy? It's both. Um, it's more of a, it's a horror comedy. It, it's for the laughs. It's definitely an LOL. It's definitely for the LOL. There's some horror elements, um, but there's definitely. I, I think it shows another side of my writing, which is my comedy side, which is something that comes out every now and then. But I really don't focus too hard on it in horror. Um, but I've been told that comedy is sort of like even that's an even stronger suit than horror i guess but I, I do my best i guess but um it's definitely it's definitely comedy driven but in a horror world but there are horror elements and there's some really cool gruesome stuff in it too so we definitely didn't skip out on that but it, it's made it's, yeah, it's mostly like there the, to make you laugh it's like a horror uh dark comedy uh mystery show you know uh mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Moi is our, our animated uh, director there on the Ghost in the Fog. So, hi, Moi. Yeah. Well, she Sophie said she didn't look at me like I was nuts, but she was definitely like, "What are you talking about?" Because I was just spitting it out. That's the best pitches. Um, that like, I, I don't, I don't know who you are, but tell me more. Yeah. Right. Oh, Sophie. Yeah, Sophie. Um, as actually, she's uh, she helps run Days of the Dead Film Festival. She's been a part of Horror Hound Film Festival. She's a uh, a, a festival staple out in the Midwest, in Indiana, and, and all through uh, all through the Midwest. And she's helped me a lot with um, my career as far as like getting to know the different territories and who the different filmmakers are and introducing me to different people. So she's been great. I, I love her to death. She is the best, definitely, for sure. Um, but yeah, and she's definitely been like my cheerleader throughout the entire process of Ghost Chicken because it began with us sitting down having vegan burgers sort of joking about this idea and it's always been fun to sort of turn back to to her and be like hey look at where it's at now like i got it here or like i did the animatic or stuff like that and it all just started with two friends having a conversation um obviously much more than that now but it's you know we we got to sit there and, and really um kind of bond over it it's, it was like a really like bonding thing between us which is really really nice so that this this that story definitely has a, a special place for me the fact that like it's like, I love telling story, but it also, I love the way that films come together, like the way Ghost in the Fog is coming together, the way Ghost Chickens come together that, you know, it started with you being a Friday the 13th fan and us getting together and starting to talk. And then many months later, we're working on a project together, you know, Sophia and yeah. I being big horror fans, you know, bumping into each other at a horror festival and, 
you know, that, that love of horror bringing us together, you know, so Sophie has been, I mean, amazing for me over the years. She's worked, you know, the booth for me when I've done Womp Stomp film booths at different conventions. Uh, some of you who have met me at conventions have probably met Sophie, who's been a doll while I bounce around the table and she's, you know, been able to sort of run the booth for me and keep it there, but also giving me a ton of tips about how to do it and stuff like that. So it's, uh, that, that's definitely, let me see. Um, so yeah, that's definitely, um, that's definitely who Sophie is, but she's she's Ghost Chicken's biggest uh, cheerleader, I, I would say. From that. Yeah. Let's see, Frank, comedy, horror, fast food, vegan, animated short. Yeah, that's what we'll go with. <laughs> We're, I got to find that very unique, specific thing when we start submitting that, that, it. The that, that should that should be your subtitle of of, mm -hmm. of the DVD. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh, totally. And then Danae, obviously, uh, yeah, I think that like that's I, we can kind of sort of wrap wrap this up on sort of this sort of sediment, which is. I love Friday the 13th and it's going to be great to sort of open up the world. Once Never Hike Alone 2 is over, that's going to be it for me in live action and Friday the 13th, unless I get a call from the studios to go direct something at that level. Everything else that we do Friday the 13th, I think is going to live in an animated world because it's something that I could, I don't need to be on set for. It's something that I could be anywhere and keep moving forward and, and really kind of dip my toe in it because yeah. I mean, the job I want in the world is to work on some type of Friday the 13th show or film. So the, you're the, go, you're gonna hopefully i mean yeah we don't know but you know in, in the meantime this is what we got fans are, are are keeping us alive they're going to allow us you know all all said well i think we will hit that two hundred fifty thousand dollar goal at, at some point that fans will allow this to happen you know what i mean and i yeah. think that that's going to be really cool um and i don't need the studios that we're doing it this way it's just that with the studios we don't have to make like one a year we can make eight a year and yeah. we can really kind of come out of here with bringing like this level of fan film and that like some fan film ideas deserve a bigger stage. You know, they deserve to be seen. Do they deserve to be in the theater? Probably not. Like they're crazy one-off ideas that really only crazy fans will really understand. But on a streaming series where you got eight other episodes, it's a little bit easier of a pill to swallow to say, we're going to do Jason in space part two. Yeah. And people are going to love this episode because it's going to be so crazy. And we're going to take it to the next level because animation can do things that like, can you imagine Jason X, the original and animated, right? Because think about all the bad VFX that they had and how they yeah. suffered from all that lack of like for the same budget they did for that. They could have gone to Mexico or overseas to get more bang for their buck on the dollar sure. and really animated at a higher level, like a Batman animated series, like a Castlevania, like a spawn and get something that would be way more trippy and cool. Right. So this is really totally, yeah. what we want to show to show to the fans, show to the studio, show to everybody that, you know, we've been dancing around horror animation. I've seen some things announced in the last few weeks, but if we do it like this, we bring one of the heavy hitters to animation and you give and you kind of build this sort of world around it. It's, it's got so much potential. And so that's why I really think it's important. Like again, back the project, but then tell everybody about it. Um, you need to, you know what I mean? Like you, you got to spread the word. It's not, it's not just about you donating. It's about you donating and then telling people that you donated and then encouraging them to join you and follow you. Like yeah. we're Juan and I got this one, you know, you know, you guys can trust me with never hike alone too. That one's coming. You know, we're, we're going to be shooting in, in about a month, um, a month and eight days. So we're, wow. it's, it's, it's coming in. Like I'm, I'm starting to feel it. Like I actually had my first like stress it's around the corner. I know I had my first like stress wake up where I was like, <gasps> we're going to film soon. <laughs> where, where is everybody? Is everybody in there? You know? Yeah. <clears throat> Did we purchase the things yet? Like I literally just got, 15 like emails the other day because i had to order a new credit card and it finally came in and we could finally start ordering up all the uh all the hotel rooms for everybody that we got to get up to the mountains and stuff like that so all the chargers are coming through and i'm like oh my god it's happening we're spending the money <laughs> <laughs> it's like no no don't spend it <laughs> we gotta keep saving but it's you know it's, it's time it's time to put rubber to the road so you know, what, what's great about this is we've been able to get a really good head start. Keep an eye out for announcements coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, updates to Indiegogo will be posting, you know, some of the artwork and things that they finish up. As we approve artwork and things get ready for picture, we'll be sharing that with fans. And the only way to do that is if you back the Indiegogo and you get those updates, you'll be the first ones to see it. And we'll obviously continue uh, sharing more information about that throughout the thing. Um, I'm going to look for any last questions. Juan, is there anything you want to say before we leave? Uh, no, just uh, as as Ben says, uh, 
back up the the project and and we make the rest you know all the money is for for the production not not for any anything else so right now it's a, it's a very very well how how to say it it's a very be beautiful uh project because it's it's uh, an experimental um animation project that we put our hearts and our brains on on it and it's we tr we trust Vince on this you know and Vince trusts in us so uh we team up to to bring you all this this animation friday the 13 project came to life yeah. Well, I mean, it's a pleasure. I mean, I'm I'm glad that we got to met. I'm glad that Friday yeah. the 13th brought us together. And I'm looking forward to working on this project and numerous more projects with you. I got two more questions I'm going to jump to before we go. Uh, the okay. first one's from Big Easy. Just a quick one. Have you tried Kickstarter? If so, what was your experience? I did try Kickstarter. That was our first ever campaign. We did not reach our goal. It was all or nothing. So I came over to Indiegogo, uh, started working with them because you could get it if you didn't reach your funding. Um, which we haven't missed a goal since, which has been really, really nice. Uh, Indiegogo and Kickstarter are about the same thing. Um, they have basically the same functions. They let you do basically the same stuff. I, I really couldn't say like, you should go with one or the other. It sort of depends on what your flavor is and what interface you like working with, but they're very similar in that way. Although I will say this, I wanna try Seed and Spark for a future project. And I may be doing Ghost Chicken on Seed and Spark because Seed and Spark takes ha like half of what Indiegogo takes. Um, it's just about getting the word out there. But I think now with our 50,000 followers on, you know, YouTube and 10,000 followers on Instagram and Facebook and all those different things, I think that we're in the position where now we could just launch something as Womp Stop and have that notoriety. So hopefully that will help us in that realm. And once we have some cool imagery for you guys to look at, I think you'll, you'll want to jump aboard. But I would definitely say if you're, if you're choosing between the two, check out Seed and Spark, because I hear that that's sort of the place where to go. Um, and then Fetty Fazbear has this one. I'm a big fan of Never Hike movies. Do you guys ever consider taking a look at Jason's life? Like every day on Camp Crystal Lake, what he does, I'm really curious. I would say I that Disappear... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Disappear sort of taps into that a little bit. Um, and I think we would. If, I mean, if we... I mean, if we had the series, right? Like, that's sort of one of those ideas that we would do in a series where, all right, let's do a day in the life of Jason. Like, what does he do? And we sort of, like... So I'm not going to try not to spoil anything, but Juan, I pitched you something the other day, which was more of a longer form thing about like Jason sort of like coming into contact and sort of those two different things. Yeah. Um, that would be a great way to do a day in the life of Jason because it's someone actively watching him in a way, like spying on him. Yeah. Like, so that might be a cool way to do it. It's like, yeah. So I don't yeah, it's, it's, trying, it's trying to know what Jason is and what Jason does. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, I think that would be a, so that that's a really, really great idea. But um, I'm not going to answer those questions. Um, Which ones? Uh, <laughs> let me see. Vin, what do you think of the two upcoming Friday fan films, Vengeance 2 and My Special Boy? I will say I'm looking forward to James Grimm's My Special Boy. I'll say no comment on Vengeance 2 because the filmmakers of those films have tried to sabotage uh, work that I've done and are not great people. So I don't even support them or anything that has to do with that sort of group of people. I, I okay. try to distance myself from them, but I won't go too into that. Um, next question, yeah. Next question. Uh, but yeah, big up to James Graham. I know he's been working really, really hard on my special boy. We've had quite a few conversations behind the scenes about sort of production and how to get prepared. And I know that he's had to deal with like, you know, he. I think he started crowdfunding before uh, COVID uh, shut lockdown. So him having to go through that, that must've been a amazing thing that he had to get through so kudos to him to get through that and i'm looking forward to seeing what he brings to it he's going to be coming out this october so that's going to be really good for him uh don't worry about it you, you don't have to know um and so with that let me just say thank you everybody for showing up we're going to wrap up things now the link to uh never hike alone 2 crowdfunding campaign is in the description of this video that's where you can donate to ghost in the fog a friday the 13th animated film um, we're hoping that we can get to $250,000 to fund the film and also add additional kills in the Never Hike Alone 2. Um, and you can do that by obviously going to the link, donating, but then sharing the link on your social media pages so friends and family can see what you've been up to and hopefully follow suit and help us reach our stretch goals. And if we reach $300,000, that means we'll be doing a full animated prequel for a short that will probably be between probably 30 and 40 minutes. So much bigger production, um, which will be a lot of fun.
but it's been a pleasure. Juan, thank you for coming out and joining thank me tonight. Thank you, Vince. Yeah. And we'll see everybody hopefully next week. I will announce the guests some, sometime early next week of, of who will be joining me, but we'll be back and I may have some artwork to be showing everybody. So until then, everybody have a great weekend. And until next time, we will see you.